Hi guys, welcome back to the channel, I'm Dr. Downey and today we are going to talk about Tutka and N-acetyl cysteine. Recently I decided to create some videos that start giving you guys a bit more of my opinion on certain drugs as I have made a video in the past on Tutka and N-acetyl cysteine or I'll just call it NAC from now on and I kind of just gave an overview. But I want to put this into a video where I give my general thoughts and opinion on it. Obviously these thoughts and opinions will be guided by research. And I just want to educate new people around these drugs. So you may have come across Tutka and NAC because they're quite commonly stated to be necessary when using steroids or drugs that may cause liver injury. Specifically, that would include oral steroids and SARMs. And the reason these supplements are supported by the general community is because they have research to suggest that they do assist with liver injury. So I need to divide the whole liver injury picture into either prevention or treatment. So essentially, preventing the damage from happening, or if you already have this damage and raised liver enzymes, which drug would be better in each scenario? And I don't think this is really touched on enough. A lot of people just think both are great for prevention and use it for prevention purposes, but that isn't necessarily supported by the literature. So in terms of treating drug-induced liver injury, you'd have to go to a hospital but in a lot of cases have raised liver enzymes that don't necessarily reach the threshold of drug-induced liver injury. And the best thing to do, or most well-researched thing, is essentially just supportive treatment. Ensuring adequate fluid intake and obviously stopping the drug that is causing these liver issues. But for the most part, with most steroids, just stopping the steroid and supporting yourself through adequate nutrition and such would be enough to essentially reverse changes, given that there isn't too much structural damage. But let's first look at how this liver injury occurs and then we can kind of know what we need to target when either treating or preventing drug-induced liver injury or liver injury from these steroids. So this research is also quite limited, but for the most part, what we think happens is that in these hepatocytes or liver cells, there is a loss of this membrane polarity, and this causes a disruption of flow of certain chemical and enzymes, and this itself causes the stasis or buildup of bile, and bile itself would damage these cells and cause blockages and essentially raise your liver in enzymes and cause a bit of damage in the liver. So why do these cells lose their polarity? Well, we don't really know, but what I think happens is due to the toxic metabolites that accumulate when an oral steroid is being metabolized, is that these toxic metabolites cause oxidative damage to the liver cells and this itself disrupts that polarity in the cell. So we have two pathways here that we can identify in terms of either treating or preventing liver injury. So essentially we either need to re-establish that polarity in the cell membrane or cell itself or we need to prevent the buildup of these oxidative metabolites caused by these drugs. Let's start out by looking at NAC. So what we do know from N-acetylcysteine is that it's not very effective in treating liver injury itself as a lot of trials and systematic reviews have looked at it and what they found is that it doesn't really make a difference in terms of patient outcomes. But this is in the case of non-paracetamol induced liver injury. In the case of paracetamol or Tylenol, I think Americans call it, if liver injury is established through that pathway, then n acetylcysteine is the drug of choice for that treatment. And the reason for that is because paracetamol depletes glutathione, which leads to NAPKI, its <laughs> acronym, for these metabolites that are destructive to the liver cell. So what we know from that is that N-acetylcysteine might have protective effects in terms of 
oxidative damage. But we know that in terms of treating established liver injury that it might not do much in the way of treating it. But can it help from a prevention standpoint? So instead of looking to treat established liver injury, can it prevent cases of liver injury from happening? And the problem is we don't really have too many trials on this. But we do have a small trial that was done in patients who were put on TB treatment. And for those familiar with TB treatment, a staple is isoniazid, which is demonstrated to be hepatotoxic. And in this trial, they gave N-acetylcysteine to some of the patients, half of the patients and half of them not. It was a small trial. But in the end, those who were not on their treatment, 17% of those developed a bit of liver injury, whereas only one out of the participants in the other group developed the liver injury in the N-acetylcysteine group. So this would suggest that N-acetylcysteine, although research is limited, might be effective from the standpoint of prevention of liver injury. So just taking it as a preventative measure. It does have literature to support that suggestion. But let's look at Tutka now. So in terms of prevention, Tutka does not really seem to do much in the way of preventing liver injury. And this makes sense when you look at Tutka. As we mentioned previously, there's a disruption of polarity in the hepatocytes. And there is a specific sodium toro... it's a long name, but there's a transporter within these cells. And essentially, by supplementing with Tutka, you might be able to re-establish that transporter. And this in itself might help re-establish polarity in these damaged hepatocytes. So that would suggest that in the case of established liver injury, that Tutka itself might be effective. And we have data to suggest that it is better in the standpoint of treating liver injury. In a systematic review looking at Udko, which is similar to Tutko, they found that in terms of prevention, again, that it wasn't very effective. However, the results were quite mixed, but were in favor of Udko being effective in treating especially mild cases of transaminitis or liver injury, although the two terms aren't synonymous, but I don't want to overcomplicate things here. And this would then suggest that Tutka could possibly be very useful in the case of treating established liver injury. So in summary, what we find from this is that N-acetylcysteine is very useful in preventing liver injury, and Tutka might be useful in treating liver injury that is established. But research is still limited. So in most cases, N-acetylcysteine might be all that is needed when using oral steroids to pre prevent that liver injury, although there's still data that is missing for that. And Tutka itself might only need to be implicated in the case where your liver enzymes have started to raise a bit. But due to infrequent testing of a lot of individuals, blood testing I mean, in a lot of individuals who are using steroids, it might be best to just take the two start out with N-acetylcysteine and then add Tutka a week afterwards. Or you could start out with both. There are no recommendations and I can't recommend anything because there isn't really research on it. So essentially I just wanted to make this video in order to inform people of wh what these different drugs do, where they could be used, and what they're not so good at doing. And again, just for those who may have missed it, N-acetylcysteine is good at prevention, not so good at treatment of injury to the liver, whereas Tudka is fairly good at treating, but not so good at preventing liver injury. And the combination of the two might be necessary when using oral steroids, although I don't have any literature to support this. I'm just going off studies done in other drugs. And I just want to make this as safe as possible for people who have decided to use oral steroids, although I don't advise them to do so. And for my South African viewers, I might as well bring it up here since I am talking about the two, but I am essentially going to be opening up my own supplement range, but the supplement range isn't really going to be for profit, it's essentially just going to be 
bringing in supplements and selling them for reasonable prices because the prices of supplements in South Africa are quite ridiculous, especially when it comes to something like Tutka or just pure N-acetylcysteine. So just be on the lookout for that. I'll try my best to get the pricing down as low as possible so that it's affordable and doesn't bankrupt anyone. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think in the comments down below and I'll see you in the next